hey guys welcome to a new series and this is a series i've been super excited to start so basically a quick introduction to this series this is a natural hair for beginners series so if you're thinking of starting your natural hair journey this is where you want to start i'm going to be giving you all the basics i'm going to teach you the lingo what products you can and shouldn't use for your curl type it's just it's crazy I'm gonna help you on your curl journey. And as we go, you guys get to ask me questions in the comments, ask me what you need to know, and I will do the research, I'll find it for you, and we'll put it in one of these episodes. Yay! Welcome to the first episode. Understanding your natural hair. So before you can even start your natural hair journey, you need to understand three things about your natural hair. You need to understand your curl type, you need to understand your porosity, and you need to understand your elasticity of your hair. So those are the three things that will tell you a lot about your hair, what it needs, and the state of your hair. I've got my iPad here. I've written down everything that I want to cover because I don't want to leave anything out because it's so much information. So yeah, let's get started. So first of all, we're going to get into your curl type. Now, basically there are four curl types. Type one is straight hair, so I'm not gonna cover type one at all. So type two is wavy hair, type three is curly hair, and type four is coily hair. So there are those four types. Within those types, you have type A, type B, and type C, which just goes on to explain the different like types of curls within those curl types, if that makes sense. So type two hair is, um, it's quite bendable. It's nice free flowing waves. It can be quite fine and a bit coarse. So it might break easily depending on what range you're in. Type three hair ranges from loose buoyant curls to tight springy corkscrews and it's very prone to frizz. Type 4 hair is commonly referred to as afro textured hair or kinky hair. It can either be soft and fine or it can be coarse and wiry. The strands are also very tight with type 4 hair and the curls start right from the top of the scalp down to the bottom. That's just a quick summary of the 4 hair type. So basically within those three curl types you've got the a b and c type a big curls type b medium curls type c small curls so those are the curl types explained you want to know your curl type because you want to know if your hair is prone to frizz you want to know if it's dry or not what type of moisturization methods it needs and in future videos i'm going to go through all the curl types and explain what products you should be using for your curl type cool all right now we're going to move on to hair porosity so Hair porosity basically refers to your hair's ability to maintain and absorb moisture. And the spectrum ranges from low, medium to high porosity. This is very easy to figure out. So if you want to figure out your hair porosity, I've got two methods that you can try and use. First thing you can do to test your hair porosity is do a strand test. So you're going to want to get a few strands of hair from the front of your hairline, the nape of your neck, the crown, and your temple. All right? So just... Pick random sections, just grab those hairs and you want to just grip the hair between your thumb and your index finger and rub your finger up and down that strand of hair. So if, if it moves quite easily but your hair feels hard and dense, that is low porosity hair. Normal porosity is when you feel smooth, you literally just can rub your hair up and down. There's no bumps or anything along the way. It just goes all the way up. Perfect, you've got normal porosity hair. If your hair feels rough, dry, and even if the strand breaks while you're rubbing up and down, that is high porosity hair. I hope I'm making sense. <laughs> Another way you can determine your hair porosity is to get a glass of water, take a strand of hair that has fallen out, or take it from your brush or whatever, and drop it into the water. This is the water test. If the strand of hair floats at the top of the water, that means that you have low porosity hair. If it slowly sinks to the bottom, you've got normal porosity air. And if it sinks immediately to the bottom, you've got high porosity air. Great. Now, what does all of this mean? <laughs> all right, I'm going to go through the characteristics of each of these different porosities. So low porosity air means that your curls takes longer to dry. Um, and it also just means that your hair doesn't absorb moisture and water as much as it should be. So you're going to struggle to get your hair dry. Your products will tend to build up on top of your hair because it won't be absorbed by your strands. And natural oils don't penetrate the hair and they tend to just sit on top of your hair. So if you use lots of oils on your hair and you've got low porosity hair, you're going to feel like your hair is just super oily all the time because the product just sits there. And your curls will also take longer to get wet when you're in the shower or you're trying to wet your hair. So low porosity hair means that your hair is not wanting to absorb any sort of hydration at the moment. 
great normal porosity here curls are bouncy and it's got lots of elasticity this is a very healthy porosity it requires very little maintenance so you don't need to do that much to help out this type of hair it easily accepts and retains moisture and it holds styles well and will have good results when you're coloring just because your hair is super moisturized and super hydrated it's gonna be happy all the time yes <laughs> Okay, and then high porosity hair. I've got high porosity hair. High porosity hair is the thirstiest hair out there. It just absorbs all the water. It absorbs everything. But that's not a good thing because it, sometimes it takes in way too much and it can lead to the following things. So curls easily absorb water but need more products because you need to lock in that moisture because it can take in as much water as it wants but it can also release as much water as it wants. Um, curls often look and feel dry when you've got high porosity hair. Your curls are often frizzy and your hair dries really quickly. So for me, it's great. I get out of the shower and within 20 minutes, my hair is almost dry again. It's great. Hair porosity that is high, you're going to need more products to lock in that moisture. And again, I'm going to speak about caring for your hair porosity in episode 3. So make sure you hang out and check that out. Now we're on the final thing to check with your hair to understand your natural hair is elasticity. So you want to understand how far your hair can stretch. So elasticity, you want to stretch out the curl and see if it returns to its normal form without breaking. So healthy hair should be able to stretch to about 50% of its original form and then return to its natural form without any breakage. That means you've got natural hair. If you can pull that strand straight and release it and it goes straight back into that normal curl, great. You've got amazing elasticity, really, really healthy hair. Your elasticity will tell you how healthy or unhealthy your hair is, if it's dry or not. Dry and damaged hair will only stretch about 20% of its original form and then it will snap. Hair with low elasticity will be harder to curl and it will lose curl quickly when you use heat to style it. To test your elasticity, you can select a strand from four different parts of your head, like I said earlier, and stretch it out. If the strand breaks, you have low elasticity. If it doesn't break and returns to its normal state, you either have medium to high elasticity. Now, it's very hard to figure out what you have between that. Heat styling and chemical treatments can damage your hair elasticity. So if you're someone who's been using heat styling and you've been doing Brazilians and relaxes on your hair, your elasticity is not going to be great when you start out. And that's fine because elasticity can be improved by using the right products and by caring for your hair. Overstyling and constantly doing updos and ponytails and things like that can also damage your hair elasticity. So that's a very important thing to note. So the reason you want to know your elasticity before you start your natural hair journey is because it can help you understand whether or not you need to do the big chop. So if your hair breaks immediately if you try and stretch it, it's probably best just to cut all of that hair off, do the big chop commit and let your hair grow back nice and healthy and natural without doing any heat treatments, any chemical and relaxes on that hair. You want to keep that hair as natural and as healthy as possible. Understanding your elasticity and the damage caused to your hair will help you figure out what products you want to use. And you can also, if your hair is only minimally damaged, so if you've got medium elasticity, you can do a deep conditioning treatment every few weeks just to keep your hair bouncy and to give it some extra life to help it heal basically if you've got brittle dry hair and you don't want to do the big chop you want to focus on products that are super moisturizing like deep conditioners and leave-in conditioners your elasticity will change all the time elasticity changes depending on the climate depending on what you're eating depending on the weather and how often you're styling your hair you want to keep a healthy hair routine so that your hair stays healthy so that your elasticity looks good so the reason you want to know these three things is because once you've got a better understanding of how to care for your texture you can be more versatile with your hair you can do more things with it but you need to start with the basics and you need to understand what your hair is telling you it needs so go ahead test out your hair type figure out your hair porosity and go ahead and figure out your elasticity and i want to know tell me in the comments what what your curl type is what your porosity is and what your elasticity is i want to know and if you guys have any more questions please do not hesitate to ask me please comment in the comments please message me whatever you want to do i'm super excited to be on this journey with you guys so that's everything i've got down for today's episode i hope you guys found it super helpful and super informative next week i'm going to be talking about products for your specific curl type so if you are interested in what products you should be buying in that clicks aisle tune in next week i'll see you guys then awesome yay bye